We're now joined by Adar Poonawala, the CEO of Serum Institute, to talk about the game-changing drug that would be treated treating dengue. Also joining us is Shireen Pan. Over to you, Shireen, for that interview. Well, thanks very much. Let's go across now to Adar Poonawala. Adar, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. The dengue virus, of course, is spreading panic across the, panic across the national capital. The total numbers of cases reported so far now at 3,700. I understand that Serum is uh, working with the U.S.-based R&D company Vistera to try and put out an antidote into the market. How much can you share with us in terms of where things currently stand about your uh, arrangement with Vistera? Sure. Um, we've entered into uh, an exclusive uh, agreement with Vistera, which as you know is a U.S. Uh, R&D based company, to exclusively produce and sell in India and some neighboring countries um, a dengue monoclonal antibody and we've uh, paid them millions of dollars and we still have to pay them over some milestones and they've proven this to work and neutralize the virus and remove it from the bloodstream of animals in an animal model that has been tested on in humans and the first human trials will start in Singapore that Vistera is conducting on their own so we should know in a month or two um, how well this is working um, we're quite uh, confident here at Serum Institute and our scientists are very sure on replicating the uh, clone and manufacturing it on a high scale and providing it within the next year or two um, to the Indian public uh, uh, you know in a very at a very cost effective price somewhere between five to ten thousand rupees which is still much cheaper than you know um, being hospitalized and then uh, having to treat yourself so we're at that stage at the moment and we're hoping that uh, our government permissions and licenses um, uh, uh, are granted to us in a speedy manner because this is a public health issue. Dengue um, is very serious and we need to do something about it fast. So let me just take that point forward, Adar. Where do things currently stand in India? I understand that you have applied for approval to import the antibody. Yes, so the first step is to um, uh, import the clone and then uh, we've got to conduct a few tests on it and. Um, figure out how to make it on a large scale, which shouldn't be too difficult given our experience in large-scale vaccine manufacture. After that, we will apply for the clinical trial permissions. Now, this can typically take between one to two years um, with the, all the different committees that we've got to go through as a standard practice. And this is where I think uh, the Honorable Prime Minister can play a, a serious role in um, fast-tracking a new drug development and uh, giving a boost to India to make in India for India and for exports. I think um, certain drugs which are in the life-saving category and um, you know um, are of this nature you know which impact public health I think certainly some kind of fast-track uh, procedure can be uh, put in place um, to encourage this kind of entrepreneurship development and of course ultimately the benefit to the public who is uh, suffering greatly with these diseases. But Adil, can you give us a broad timeline? If the government were not to intervene or expedite the approval process, how much time would it take for the clearances to come in from start to end? Right, so if there's no intervention in fast tracking, this could t take anywhere between two to three years, maybe even longer. We've um, had vaccine programs that have taken up to four to five years, um, of which we're, I won't go into right now, but that's what can happen in the regular process because there are various different committees. You know, they meet every three or four months. And we're talking about trying to get some kind of single window clearance where, you know, there's only one agency we go to, provide them, uh, you know, with the necessary information. And that should, like in other Western countries, um, grant you the permission within a year to conduct your trials because even after you conduct your first phase one, phase two, then again you need to apply and um, you know submit the data, which is fine. It's it's normal and it should be done. But we need to find a way of fast tracking that and reducing the number of committees and having some kind of single window clearance put in place to make it happen within a year. Adar, I understand that you've paid Vistera five million dollars already. Can you take us through the other milestone and royalty payments that you are expected to pay for this antibody? Uh, sure. Um, we've got uh, various percentages of royalties that we'll pay depending on the region and territory that we take. 
That'll happen much uh, later once we commercialize the product and it works well. We've got to pay another five or six million, I think, um, at the phase one stage and then at phase three when it's completely licensed, we've got to probably dish out another five million. So it's going to be about $15 million um, of risk that we're taking. Um, uh, in, in these milestone payments. And then once we commercialize it, it'll be a royalty percentage on the sales, again, depending on the region that we're talking about. Okay, that's as far as the dengue antibody is concerned. Now, but take us through the product pipeline at this point in time. The last conversation that you and I had, you told me that you were working on three or four uh, what you call blockbuster products. Can you give us an update on where things currently stand as far as the larger product pipeline is concerned? Uh, uh, it's, a, it's an exciting time right now. You know, we've got uh, two or three other major blockbuster vaccines um, in the pipeline. We've got a vaccine against pneumonia coming up in, in four years. Again, with the Indian clinical trial process, it's taking four years. We're, in fact, going to other countries to do some trials to speed up that process. Um, we've got rotavirus, which is a major killer in children, in newborn babies, which we hope to launch in the next um, one and a half to two years. And of course, we've got a major vaccine against uh, cervical cancer coming up for women, which is, you know, the HPV vaccine. And um, uh, it's said that cervical cancer is one of the, uh, in the top three cancers that affects um, uh, women. So that's one of the um, uh, other vaccines that we're looking to launch over the next three to four year period. Okay, Adar, if I can shift focus to the realty sector now, because you've just acquired the Lincoln House, the iconic Lincoln House in Mumbai for about 750 crore rupees. What do you intend doing with that property, and how did you manage to get it that cheap? Well, I think we got it at a fair value. I think uh, there were some serious bidders. Um, when the initial sort of um, uh, inquiry came that, you know, would you be interested to participate in an auction, uh, it was a closed auction, so we didn't know who the other bidders were. Um, I naturally, of course, you know, because of the size of the deal, um, uh, had some thoughts about it. But I think within a week or two, we uh, pretty much made up uh, our minds uh, and decided to go ahead. I, I discussed it extensively with my father. And um, I think the deal went in our favor because it was just my father and myself making a decision. And that quick decision to be able to put in a bid and commit that value early on in the bidding process, I think um, helped clinch the deal because I think there might have been a lot of other bidders. I believe there was another con a consulate, uh, Middle Eastern consulate in interested and some other um, very high net individuals which um, uh, could well have outbid us. And I think because we were able to decide upon this decision very quickly and, and swiftly we could um, come to a, a quick arrangement with the Americans. I think it is a fair deal, the value. I think the value is very fair because it's got a lot of heritage res restrictions, so a lot of developers shied away from it. Um, and ordinarily, you know, this kind of property would have probably had 50 bidders um, uh, because of its uh, size, its iconic value, its historical value. So we're very proud that we, we won the bid and it's a very proud moment for India that a property like this can go at a value like this and an Indian, uh, more importantly, can, um, you know, buy and invest in a property like this. So I have to ask you, uh, Adar, because you've already done Lincoln House, you were looking at Grovner House, that hasn't worked out for you, but any other real estate deals on the anvil, what can we expect as far as your real estate aspirations are concerned from here on? Well, at the moment, we've, um, on the real estate front, we've got two projects coming up. Uh, we've acquired in partnership in a 50-50 joint venture with the Panchil Group in Pune, uh, a 90-acre island in the Maldives, and we've signed up with the Bulgari Resorts and Hotels to uh, put a 100-villa put a, um, uh, project there. It's a, it's a roughly $110 million project, and we hope to launch that in about two and a half to three years. We've, we're going to start construction there very shortly this year. And uh, we've also got some other commercial real estate that we've invested in, again, with the Panchil Group on a 50-50 joint venture. And we're putting up the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Pune as well. So that's all I think that's happening um, that we've signed up this year. And we are always on the lookout for some good um, real estate deals, um, even in Europe and in the UK, because, you know, if it's, a, if it's a major city like New York, London, Mumbai, Delhi, 
um, these prime iconic properties we feel will always hold their value even if there is a recession or a, or a so-called slump in demand um, as we're seeing at the moment in, in Mumbai. All right, we will have to leave it there. Adar Punawala, thanks very much for speaking to us here on CNBC TV 18 and taking us through the new uh, tie-up that you've done with US-based Vistara for the dengue antibody. Appreciate your time here on CNBC TV 18. With that, it's time.